What's up everyone back for another beer review and today is the continuation of Mix Six Pack Theme Month here on the channel and the beer I'm reviewing today comes from the 21st Amendment Brewery and they're out of San Francisco, California and this is their Hell or High Watermelon. So they're calling this an American wheat beer that is brewed with 100% Fresh watermelon puree comes in at 4.9% alcohol by volume, 17 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this can is because there is a date on the bottom of it, but it is like, you know, kind of uh, smudged. So I don't know exactly how old it is, but it does say seasonal release on the can. And I know this is a spring and uh, summer uh, seasonal. So I'd imagine this can is probably no older than four months old, but probably a little bit fresher than that. So one interesting thing about this beer is it says brewed and canned by 21st Amendment Brewery, uh, Utica, New York. So I don't I don't know if they're contract uh, brewing there or I, I thought they were bought a couple years ago so maybe uh, they have an additional brewery or additional place to brew this one but uh full disclosure I've had this one before uh, a couple times and to be honest with you I think it's a solid beer I really like that the watermelon character in this one seems to be authentic and not candied like like a jolly uh, rancher like a watermelon jolly rancher it seems to be like an actual like watermelon juice um, I reviewed a green zebra from founders uh, earlier this month and I also like that one because again the authentic watermelon character so uh, they are using they say 100% uh, fresh watermelon puree so that would make sense but I always found the uh, base of this beer to be kind of lacking now I'm not a huge American wheat ale fan American pale wheat ales especially um, I find them lacking uh, in comparison to their like German and Belgian counterparts I don't know what it is just how it is uh, so anyway let's give this a crack pour it into the 21st amendment glass here so hashtag uh, proper glassware I have not used this one in a few years probably gonna be you know <laughs> dirty glass mafia everywhere we'll see anyway Let's give it a pour here. I don't want to generate a huge head, but uh, you know, it happens sometimes. So no, not dirty glass mafia as far as I can tell. That's pretty cool. So yeah, pours out this cloudy yellow uh, color with some orange tinges in there. Uh, pretty carbonated, although I believe this glass has the etching at the bottom to promote the carbonation. About a three finger um, gigantic head, uh, maybe even four fingers at this point. Seems like there's something on the glass here. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's super fluffy looking, uh, somewhat creamy, and it plays the role of a wheat beer. I think it I think it looks appropriate. I'm trying to see what's on the side of this glass. I don't know. Looks like a defect in the glass itself. Anyway, let's get a nose. Hmm. Well, as you can tell, the head's huge here, but I should be able to generate it and roll my hang out. All right, there we go. So I get a little bit of the watermelon, and it's a sweeter watermelon. It's not candied, it's just sweeter. And it's probably from the base malts. I get a little bit of a weedy sensation in here. There's a graininess, a little bit of citrus character, like a lemon lime. Yeah, a little bit of a breadiness too. But I'm, it's 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 a struggle to pull out characters in this beer. And again, I've had this beer before numerous times, and I just kind of rem remember the same thing. Like the nose wasn't spectacular. Only a few things going on. I get a little bit of the watermelon on top of that that American uh, wheat ale base, but it doesn't smell exciting. It smells like it should be refreshing and easy going, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. So again, I really like the watermelon character of this one. I don't know how many of you out there have had this one, but this tastes like slight red parts of the like flesh of the watermelon as you're getting closer to the white part and closer to like the, the actual peel. It has a really, yeah, it has a really just like refreshing watermelon character to it. It's not sweet. It just has a watermelon flavor that is more to the white part of the watermelon. So not bitter, but like kind of getting close to it. I mean, it really does, it really does remind me of eating a slice of watermelon and just getting to the last like, you know, one fifth of it. That's pretty much what this reminds me of. The base beer itself though is this is where it kind of loses me just a little bit there's not there's like all the base beer is doing for me is like kind of just carrying that watermelon flavor which is fine I mean it's a watermelon weed ale but I really don't get much from the base honestly like I could sit here and lie to you and be like oh I'm getting this this and this get a little bit of like a graininess and like a wheat component but that's it mouth uh, mouth um body at 4.9 percent a little bit thin this drinks more like a four, four and a half. I'm okay with that. It's a sub 5% beer. I don't expect anything from the body in most of these beers. Mouthfeel, it has a soft, smooth character to it. 
There's carbonation, as you saw. Again, this is the glass that promotes carbonation, but there is carbonation here. It has a nice crispness to it, but it's still soft and smooth at the same time. Very easy to drink. The best thing I can say about this one, I know it's a cop-out. I know it's a cop-out, but this is an easy drinking wheat beer with watermelon. It's like, it's just an easy drinking beer. I could crush 3,000 cans of this. Not really. A little bit of exaggeration, but I could drink a lot of this. And that's what this is meant for. The reason why this is a spring and summer seasonal is you could take this, you know, poolside, you could take this to the, bar, you know, at a barbecue, bring a, whatever, a 12 pack of it, maybe a case of it, uh, take it to the beach and you could drink a lot of these. You wouldn't get hammered you'd get a good buzz on and you would be refreshed all in the same. So like, I can't really sit here and say there's anything bad about this one. The best part about this one for me is that authentic watermelon character. There's nothing I like. Listen, I love watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Love them. Like they're my favorite Jolly Rancher, right? But I don't necessarily like that candied watermelon in my drinks. Um, just not for me. I'd rather have them as candy you know, pretty much what I know them from. So the fact that this is authentic, kind of like the green zebra for my palate, I do enjoy this one. I typically give this a 3.5 out of 5. Today, I'm going to bump it up a quarter point. Why? Because maybe when I'm, you know, I check these in on tap, you know, over the past, whatever, three, four years, I'm just kind of sitting there going, oh, it's 3.5, whatever. When I'm sitting here drinking this, I, this, I get why this is made. I get what they're going for with this beer, and I think they do a great job with it. Um, but for my palate, it's nothing amazing. I just know this is an easy drinking watermelon wheat beer that has no off flavors. There's nothing bad about this one. Uh, there's nothing, nothing off-putting. It's very easy, crushable, and just a solid beer. So I'm going to give um, high, or <coughs> hell or high watermelon from 21st Amendment a solid 3.75 out of 5. It's an easy going drinking beer. Nothing more, nothing less. Price point on this one, obviously I got it in the mix six pack, but I think these are $9.99 for a six pack locally. Although I've seen, I want to say I've seen 12 packs of this for like 15 bucks. Maybe they come in 15 packs. I know once they get to the 12, 15 pack range, somewhere around there, they start going just above a dollar a can. So, I mean, for like a buck 30 a can or a buck 50 a can, you, I mean, that's a great value for this. So great value and availability wherever 21st Amendment gets distribution. They're in a bunch of different states. I know a lot of people get them. And this is one of their more popular offerings. I always see this when it comes spring, summertime, and it flies off the shelf and people seem to dig it. So yeah, they, they do a pretty good job with this one. It's nothing amazing, but as far as like a watermelon beer goes, it's one of the better ones I've had, especially when you talk about that authentic watermelon flavor. So 4.9%, super easy to drink, no alcohol or anything. So yeah. Simple, easy, 21st Amendment, hell or high watermelon. Gets a 3.75 out of 5. Appreciate you guys stopping by for another beer review. If you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it because I feel a lot of you have. And until the next mixed, <laughs> mixed six-pack beer, which will be tomorrow, I bid you all farewell. Cheers.